Como parte de la inauguración de la cátedra Max Aulauri Anderson fue invitada por la máxima casa de estudios para ofrecer la conferencia, conferencia inaugural, que tiene que ver con lo audiovisual y su repercusión, su relación con el conocimiento en el siglo XXI. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to talk to Lori Anderson, um, a long tradition behind you in, in art. So what is the connection of uh, image in general with knowledge in the 21st century, especially in the scope of such a wide variety of images we have now and the productions uh, of them? What a huge, enormous question. Um, it's We're drowning in images, and we don't know what what 99% of them mean. So this is, I think, the job of, of people who work with images and and to give a context to them, because we're our eyes are just exhausted every day with so many um, images, and also the speed is really um, uh, so much faster, so we don't have time to process what they mean. Um, So I think that, um, and sometimes, they they don't mean anything. And what about uh, the importance of narrative of the stories? You told us during the conference a lot of stories, and you have a uh, long family storytelling tradition. Your your grandfather from Sweden, is that right? You know, I was just in Sweden a couple of weeks ago, and I discovered that his whole story is fiction. It was really a shock because his story was always, um, I came from Sweden when I was nine. I came to Toronto and then to Chicago. Went and I started a horse business when I was 10 and I got it married when I was 11. And the family's going, really? That doesn't sound possible. Um, but that was his, he just decided to make a, make a story. And I always thought, It's probably to hide a dark story, like probably a little boy who runs away from home or s hides in the ship. Okay, the real story is he came with his parents to the United States when he was three. You know, it was, it was nothing to do with the, with the fiction he made up. What is the condition, the current condition we have as human beings in general, as an, uh, artists, with fiction? Sometimes we tend to divide fiction and reality most of the times. Artists tend to blur that vision. I would say politicians do a better job of blurring that. Uh, because right now, of course, I'm a storyteller, but this is the season of stories in the United States. You know, all of the politicians, they're storytellers. That's what they do, and they they work with language. I mean, language is the key to the world. You know, if you say it's like that, it has a lot of power. Words have power. So we listen to these politicians, and they're telling us how the world got to be like this, why it's like this, what the future will be, and it's just their story. And we're going, is that a good story or a bad story? Or something, you know, does it match reality? It's very hard to say. What would be the connection between telling stories, creating art, and having technology, which sometimes uh, leaves us far behind. Yeah, I think some people um, rely on technology to make their story cooler, faster, more, you know, and that's how you sort of sell yourself. Um, we often treat ourselves a little bit like products, like imagine what you're, you, who you are in your Facebook. You're like, hey, I have these interests and I'm this way, and you're like, really? Um, you know, you're not a bowl of Cheerios but you're selling yourself like one. So the fact is, you know, uh, it would be wonderful if we could be a little bit more tender and less, um, uh, and less about uh, ourselves as, as products. Is contemporary art lacking some sort of humanism? I think contemporary life is lacking hum humanism. I think, you know, that uh, we're under such pressure To, um, to do things that um, it's easy to forget who we are. I forgot I was going to tell my three rules to, uh, for living this afternoon at, when I was talking to the students, so I'll tell you what they are because they help me a lot. Um, my husband and I came up with these three rules to live by. And uh, because life is so fast, you know, it goes by so fast, you think sometimes, what should I do? And you don't know. Okay, so here, here are the three rules. Number one, Don't be afraid of anybody. Can you imagine your life if you're not afraid of anybody? Second, get a good bullshit detector. 
and learn how to use it. You know, who is saying what? Third is be really tender. And that's it. You have everything that you need if you follow those three rules.